Hi everyone and welcome back. I went fabric shopping yesterday and the day before and maybe even the day before. I've got a love-hate relationship with fabric shopping but I came across a pattern that I am truly inspired to start and create and I want to get started with it and that required new fabric. Join us in a moment and I'll tell you the good and the bad about the fabric shopping and show you my haul. We'll be right back. And welcome back to the Shamrock Quilt Studio. Oh, hi, welcome back. Let me put my coffee down. I don't want to spill it on everything. Now, I found this great book. Actually, what happened was I happened to be looking through some YouTube videos and I found someone who's sewing some of the blocks for this sampler. And uh, they, they just look gorgeous. One of the things I was so impressed with was the size of this block. It was 36 inches square. That's one heck of a big block. And that really intrigues me to no end for some reason. Can't explain it. But it's exactly what I was looking for, a big scale block. And I think I've got an idea how I'm gonna put some of the blocks in this book together to create something a little bit different than what's in the book. So I ordered this book. I did find it on Amazon and it's called The Barn Star Sampler and it is by Shelley Cavana. Cavana. So if you go on Amazon, you should be able to find this. It's by C&T Publishing. It's got one of those, um, I want to call it almost like a velvet cover on it. It's, um, it's not a slick cover, but it's very attractive looking. And the block that I saw on the YouTube channel was a little bit different color than what's in the book. I really like those colors, but when I saw, a, not necessarily the picture on the cover, but when you go inside and look at this block, and let me see if I can find it real quick. Should be this page right here. It's this block right here. That's the one we're going to do. And like I said, it's 36 inches. Now this block, when you look at it in here and you're looking at all the colors, it's kind of an unusual color combination. It's something they call indigo, which to me looks a bit like navy in the picture. And I'm kind of going by more um, what the picture looks like to me with a little guidance from the description of the fabrics. And one thing this book does a really good job of is telling you a little bit about the fabric. Not necessarily the exact fabric, but for example, in one of these uh, fabrics that's required for this first block we're going to do, it says a fat quarter of aqua floral, and it tells you what it's for. It says a fat quarter of aqua floral number two, so there must be two different ones, for side units. And then she tells you it's fabric 15. So as you follow through, if you were going to make all of the blocks in this book, you'd be able to see where else you're going to be using that fabric. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I, she does use a lot of yardage, but she also uses fat quarters, which I find to be... Um, most beneficial because it, sometimes fat quarters are easier to find. Now, not necessarily in the exact colors you're looking for. Which brings me to my next question, or my next point, rather. I love to fabric shop, but when I go into a fabric store and I'm trying to match the fabrics with what I want to buy from what they have, and what might be shown in a book, there's where my dilemma comes in. I don't care where I go, they never have all of the fabrics. 
They have two, but not the third one. They have three, but not the fourth one. Or they may have three, but not two others that I need. And it gets a little bit frustrating because you work on this color pathway. Let's say you're looking at greens and you figure out that they don't have that one kind of fabric you need to complete the design. And you say, okay, then let's not do it in green. Let's do it in purples. So you go look at the purples, but you see there's something missing. One of the advantages that people have when they're writing a book and creating a pattern and they're showing you an example in a book is they've already done that. They've already worked the kinks out. And when we come along to follow that pattern, if we want to make it in similar colors with a similar look, it gets very difficult. The only time I found that's a really big advantage is if you are willing and can afford to buy a whole, uh, what would you call it? Uh, just the whole package deal where you're buying the pattern, you're buying either the fabrics or the pre-cuts for the pattern. So um, that set of materials is all together when it comes to you and you're just following the instructions to put it together. There's a lot of skill involved in that but some of the choices have been taken out. And if you have any idea about me from watching this channel, or if you personally know me, number one, I'm fairly frugal with everything I do, but particularly with fabrics and working with quilts, you start out with an idea. It may, you may finish it up and it may be beautiful, but you could finish it up and say, I don't like it. I didn't like it. I don't want it throw it away, give it away, do something with it. Well, if you're spending a bunch of money on fabrics, it makes you think twice. So that brings me to my shopping expeditions. Actually, I think I only went shopping Friday and Saturday this weekend. Friday night, I stopped off at Joann's. There's one close to where I work. And I said, well, it's an opportunity to go by. I've got some time I can spend and look at fabrics because I already had the book. So I knew what I wanted. And fortunately, I had to remember to bring the book with me. And I got into Joann's and let me tell you, they had fabrics and I kind of started looking at the fabrics and, and what was matching the colors and the patterns. But then I got to looking and, you know, usually Joann's has a lot of things on sale. But the fabric wall that I was looking at had no sale signs, none. They only had the regular price um, little sign up. And at $10 a yard for these fabrics, that would have been okay if I had been able to find what I needed using fat quarters and fabrics. But the fat quarters, nothing was organized. They were all in different places. They didn't seem to have the colors I needed. And it just, it became overwhelming. So I left, I didn't buy anything. I wasn't gonna pay $10 a yard and have to stand at the cutting table half an hour to get things cut in quarter and third yard increments. So I just accepted it as defeat and said, I'll have to come back another time when things are on sale. And then I came home and had an email from Joann's that said everything was on sale for $3.99 a yard. Where were the signs? When I looked in the app, I didn't see that they were on sale. There were very few coupons. So I'm not quite sure what was going on at that Joann's on Friday night. Skip to Saturday. There's one other fabric store that I can go to with a decent selection of fabrics. So I went there and I was determined that I was gonna find something. I am so enamored with this that I really wanna get started on it within the next week or so. And to be able to do that, I need to get the fabric secured, start washing them, reading through the directions, knowing where I'm going, all of that. So I went Saturday and the first thing I said was, I don't care how long it takes, I'm going to find what I need or, or find something that will work. And I was very fortunate that I did. 
Before we go through the actual fabrics for the quilt, I want to show you this too because this store was having 40% off. And I found this really attractive gray paisley design. It's kind of a, I think it's a darker gray on the gray. I don't think it's white. And this is the wide fabric. I've been looking for something like this for months and they happen to have it. And at 40% off, it was time to, to buy it right then. So I bought a little over two yards and I'm going to use this for our blue star project. I was going to put a white backing on it, but this will be perfect and I won't have to piece it and I can just move on with it. So that was a real find there. Okay, now for my fabrics. And I think what I'll do is I'll take a picture of this, this um, barn star block. And like I said, it's going to be 36 by 36. So it's going to be a little bit bigger than this, probably out to the edges of the frame. So it's going to be a big block. So I'll put an image of that block here so you can kind of follow along with me. And let me turn it to that block so that as we talk through these fabrics, I can tell you what the description in the book is and then show you what I picked. I'll just put that there as kind of a paperweight and we'll get started. Okay, now in the center of the block, I believe if I'm reading this correctly, it calls for three quarters of a yard of dark indigo print for corner and center units. But when I look at the picture, what I'm seeing is a solid piece of dark blue. So I kind of went with navy as opposed to indigo because it's hard to, um, to, to match indigos. It's a little bit easier to match navies. So for the center of the block, I went with this navy and I took pictures here and I'm going to see if I can tell you what fabrics these were. This is a Kona navy. And we're going to use that for the center of the block. For the white background print, we're just going to use a plain white background. Um, personally, the tone on tone white, I don't, I like the way they look. I don't like the way they feel. And I don't like if I end up hand quilting it, hand quilting it through it because usually they're very, dents in their design and it makes it just a little bit harder to do. So we're going to use just plain white and I have that on hand. Then it calls for a fat quarter of green print number one. And their green print was I think a floral green print number one. Just green print. So I've got a green print here. It's kind of a um, a little on the dull side, I would say, but it's kind of a medium to light medium green. And then the print on it is a darker green. Um, the darker is a little bit like olivey, but I really like that. And I think it's a good contrast to the navy. Okay, next fabric. Oh, and that's going to be used in uh, little blocks, squares, and triangles around the block. Next print is a fat quarter of aqua floral number two. Now this is the one I had the most problems with because I could not find an aqua floral that I thought would work. There was one that was a perfect match of these two colors, but it was very busy. And the one shown in the picture in the book has a lot of white in it and it just has the I guess the floral components in in that blue and green excuse me so I found this this is a I want to say it's a either white or very very light gray background it's got kind of a 
a little bit of a gray swash through it. Irregular, wide stripes. And then it has a green and a blue dot, which are almost exact matches for the other two fabrics that I have. But they're not perfectly round dots. They're just a little um, irregular. And that's that fabric there. So here we're here are the three so far we've got. All right, and that fabric is used a lot on the outside of the block. Then next up was a 3 8 yard of indigo floral. And this one is used all around kind of the center, towards, towards the center, but not in the center, if that makes sense. And when I look at the picture of the block, it looks like a polka dot to me. It really doesn't look like a floral. And I think that's because we can't really zoom in on that image. So I went with a little polka dot. It's kind of a, the dots are pretty far apart and they're very small. It's as good of a match to the actual navy as I could find in the store. It's a good contrast to the green. It's a little bit of a contrast to this. This is where I, the only place in my fabric choices that I saw a little bit of conflict because we've got dot, two kinds of dots. If we had had one that was a floral, that would have been better. But I think that they are, for the most part, they, they can touch, but the pieces don't butt up against each other. So I think it will work okay. And then the final fabric was one fat eighth. I've never seen that in a pattern before. But it says a fat eighth of medium aqua print for center units. And I found kind of a, a mottled aqua color. So we add that in here. And then here are the fabrics that will be used in this block. Now... This book is really good at telling you how much fabric you need for that block. And it is, has a great job of telling you how much you need if you're going to make the whole sampler. But I'm going to mix and match the blocks. They're all going to be with these fabrics. So I don't know beyond the center block how much more I'm going to need. So what I did was I bought a yard of everything. Now this fabric happened to be on clearance, much to my surprise when I got up there to cut it. So I had her cut me two yards of that. So that will probably show up in the outer blocks a little bit more. And then this one was the end of the roll, or rather a piece that had been cut off and put back in the roll. So there's a little bit more than a yard there, probably a yard and a quarter. So that's what we're starting with. And then it calls for one and one quarter yard of the white print, which I'll probably use the So Classic. Um, or uh, there's a new one that I bought from Joann's not recently that I had on another show. But it's their basic white fabric. If you don't pick the Kona and you want 100% cotton, it's the other one. And I ha I'll have to check and see if I can put a note in the comments below which one that is. Now, for the fabrics, if I take out the backing fabric, about $24 is what I spent. About $24 for this. I think this is, if once, once I add the white, I think this is going to be plenty for what I intend to do. And I, the backing fabric was about $15, $16. So that's what, um, what I'm going to be using for this particular new project. We probably won't start it next week. It'll probably be the week after that, um, just simply because of other things in the works and there's all the pre-washing and ironing and starching that has to go on. I will tell you that I will be doing a review of this book once we get a little further into this project so I can see how well it's written as far as the designs go they're lovely 
and lots of different color combinations, lots of ways that these blocks are used interchangeably. She has in here 36 inch blocks, uh, 24 inch blocks, 16 inch blocks, 8 inch blocks, and 4 inch blocks. So you really could mix and match to your heart is content and you can swap up colors um, if you like for example if you like the color design of this one but you like the pattern design of this one just swap the colors you're going to have to calculate your uh, fabric needs and she has three of the really large blocks in this and uh, it's it's really very attractive I don't particularly enjoy a quilt quite this busy. Uh, I like to see a little bit of uh, continuity between block to block, either in design or in color. And this, for my taste, this is a little bit busy, but there are lots of elements in this quilt that I really like and I think I'm gonna use a lot. So we'll do a review on the book couple of weeks out and see how we're doing. So it was a really busy Saturday, lots of shopping involved, and now it's going to be a busy week getting everything washed. But uh, we're going to move forward with that. Our Modern Dresden project, we're still working on that and there's still videos out. I'm just about finished with the hand quilting. I've got a couple of pins still in here that you might be able to see. But it's coming along and I want to take the videos I have left and combine them and then do one final video of the completed project. So stay tuned for that. Okay, it's been a great day and it's going to be a busy afternoon. So let me get started and get you back to your sewing. I hope you have a great day. If you enjoy this video, if you've got a comment to share, please do so. Give us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you next time back here at the Shamrock Quill Studio.